This is the true story of an infant chimpanzee at Bosu, Guinea, West Africa, who died at the age of two and a half years. A researcher happened to capture her life on videotape for 16 days before her death and 27 days thereafter. The mother was named Jire, an approximately 35-year-old female. The infant's name was Jokro. In January 1992, I visited the forests of Bosu in Guinea. At Bosu, there is a long-term research site where we can observe stone tool use by wild chimpanzees. Here comes a female chimpanzee named Jire. She's carrying her baby on her back. The baby is called Jokro. Chimpanzees at Bosu use a pair of stones to crack open oil palm nuts. Jokro, the baby, sits by her mother's side. She seems to have a runny nose. Right behind Jokro sits her big sister, Ja. Ja is seven and a half years old and she can already crack open the nuts. Jokro is two and a half and she cannot use the stone tools yet. Instead, she steals nuts from her mother. But it looks like Jokro is not feeling too well. She may have caught a cold. Although the forest is located close to the equator, the temperature drops in January. At night, it can fall below 15 degrees Celsius. Jira puts the back of her fingers against her daughter's forehead. It looks almost as if, being anxious about Jokro, she's checking her body temperature. January 12th. Jokro is riding on her mother's back and so together they arrive at the nutcracking site. Chimpanzee infants stay with their mothers until they reach the age of about five years. Jokro starts to suckle. She will continue to feed on breast milk until the age of at least three and a half years, even though she can also eat other foods. The next day, Jokro's walk is unsteady. If you look carefully, you can see that the hair around her hips is in poor condition. Although Jire, the mother, cracks nuts as usual, Jokro only sits by her side. Three days have passed. Jokro's condition is worsening. She is sitting alone, hardly moving, not far from her mother. Ja, Jokro's seven and a half year old big sister, walks over to Jokro. She invites her to play. Ja touches Jokro, but Jokro does not respond. So Ja bends a shrub, trying to encourage Jokro to play in this way. But still, Jokro does not move. After cracking nuts, the chimpanzees move on to feed on fruits high up in the trees. As they are moving from one tree to the next, I happen to observe that Jokro's big sister, Ja, is transporting a log. 
she carries the log on her shoulder or holds it under her arm. When she stops on a branch, she gently pats the log. To me, this is somehow reminiscent of the toys of young girls native to the area around Bosu, whose dolls consist of a simple straight log with hair attached to the top. It seems as if Jia is pretending that the log is her ill little sister and she's caring for it as her mother cared for Jokro. January 18th. Ten days have passed since Jokro caught a cold. When her mother comes to sit nearby, Jokro slowly approaches her and starts to groom. Infants begin to groom their mother and other members of the community at the age of one and a half years. However, infants are not very good groomers and so the bouts tend to be short. But on this day, Jokro grooms her mother for a long time with eager attention. Nevertheless, Jokro no longer eats and does little apart from sit quietly by her mother. The next day, Jokro suddenly falls to the ground. Her big sister, Ja, walks over to her and tugs at her hand and leg. Ja tries to pull Jokro up, but she does not stir. The group now starts to move. Ja follows the others, and Jira comes to the infant. She gently lifts Jokro onto her back. There seems to be some energy left in Jokro yet. She grasps the hair on her mother's back as they move away. The next day, Jokro's condition has improved a little. She is sitting next to her mother. However, she has stopped suckling. Her eyes are closed and her head rests on her bended knees. Three days later, Jokro's condition has seriously deteriorated. When Jira takes her hand and lifts her onto her back, Jokro just succeeds to cling to her. As they pass in front of me, I see that Jokro's eyes are still open and they look straight into mine. January 25th. Jokro's arms and legs hang lifelessly. Jira puts her daughter on the ground. I look at Jokro's chest but see no signs of breathing. I realize that she's dead. She died this very day. Jira takes Jokro's hand and places her body on her back. She's holding Jokro's wrist between her neck and shoulder. Just like when she was alive, 
Jokro is riding on her mother's back in prone posture. Two days have passed since I confirmed Jokro's death. Her corpse is lying face up, supine posture, on the back of the mother. The belly is swollen with gas. Jokro's body has started to decompose. Jira chases away the flies circling her dead infant. Three days after death, Jira continues to carry the body, but its posture has become more strange. It's lying on its back, upside down. The head is facing backwards. Jokro's belly is now flat. The rotting seems to have slowed. Four days after death, Jokro's body has begun to dry out. It is mummifying. The shape is becoming distorted. But the mother has returned to carrying it the way she would a live infant, right side up and in the normal prone position. Chua, the alpha male of the community, sniffs Jokro's corpse. I myself can smell the strong odour of decomposition. However, other members of the community show no signs of aversion to or fear of the lifeless body. When Jira puts the body on the ground, other chimpanzees peer at it curiously. They watch as the mother picks fly larvae off her infant's remains. Nine days after death, a fight breaks out within the community. Jira does not release Jokro's hand. She holds her daughter's arm between her neck and shoulder, keeping it safe from falling as she climbs. Fifteen days have passed since Jokro died. Her body has now completely dried out. Jira continues to carry the body cautiously. But now the mother has noticed a change in her own body. Because her infant has died and stopped suckling, Jira's menstrual cycle has returned. Jira continues to chase away the flies attracted to the dead body. Then she picks up the body and looks directly into its face. She starts to clean Jokro's face. She grooms her daughter's remains as if she were still alive. Soon after, I observe a youngster playing with the body while the adults are taking a rest. A six and a half year old male named Na, takes Jokro's body and climbs a tree with it. He swings the corpse and lets it fall to the ground, 
from the height of about five meters. He rushes down the tree and picks it up, then climbs up and drops it again. He repeats this over and over. It looks almost like two young chimpanzees playing chase. Meanwhile, Jira looks on gently. Twenty-one days after death, Jira's bottom is swollen and pink. This is how a female chimpanzee's body signals the time of ovulation. A five-and-a-half-year-old boy stands up, raises his arms and shows his penis in a sexual courtship display. It is not unusual for such a young chimpanzee to perform courtship in this way. However, Jira does not abandon her dead infant. One day, a very interesting episode occurs. Chua, the alpha male of the community, rushes towards me in a charging display. He uses Jokro's mummified body as part of his display. Chimpanzees usually use dead branches to accentuate power in a charging display. Yet this time, Chua uses the body of a dead infant. However, I notice a subtle detail. When Chua turns around, he gently switches the body from his right to left hand. With branches, he has never shown such delicate handling as with Jokro's remains. I sensed an unknown side to him and others of his kind, a part hiding deep within the chimpanzee's mind. Chua abandons the body right in front of me, only about five meters away. Chokro has become a perfect mummy. All her body parts have remained intact, only a jaw is missing. The mother, Jira, retrieves Jokro's body, just as she always has. And so an infant chimpanzee lived and died in the forest of Bosu. She was two and a half when her life ended, but I observed how she remained with her community for a month beyond her death. The word Jokro comes from the language of the area's native people, the Manon. It is the triplo kitten, a huge tree with leaves in the shape of a hand. Perhaps Jokro will be reborn in her next life as her namesake and live for a hundred years.